never approach good. Morning Coast, 5093. We are at 222, descending via the Ski 2 RNAV arrival for 3 4 right transition with a Bravo. Three five left visual sky west. Fifty ninety three. Thanks. So the ninety three be flying three three zero and the three five left localizer. Heading three three zero and three five left localizer. Fields in sight for Delta ninety two heavy. Delta forty six ninety seven is going to maintain nine thousand. Skywest 5375, flighting 325, intercept only 35, left localizer, just going to maintain 10,000. Localizer 35, left, maintain now, uh, speaking the altitude, Skywest 5375. Skywest 5375, just going to maintain 10,000. 10,000, thanks, Skywest 5375. Skywest 2214, flighting 080, just going to maintain 8,000. Far and stay altitude again for me, please. Yeah, just maintain 9,000, everybody better maintain 9,000. Information Bravo, flight of a 230 descending via Clay Street. Skywest 4697, turn right, hit in 260. Delta 982, heavy, clear visual approach, only 35 left. Delta 982, heavy. Skywest 5166, turn approach, clear visual approach, only 35 right. 35 right. Skywest 5375, airport's 1 o'clock, 2 1 miles. Skywest 5375, clear visual approach, only 35 left. Good visual 35 left, scale with 5375. Maintain flight level 230. 3 miles. 22 14, flighting 020, joint final, clear visual approach, 234 right. Joined it on a heading 020, yeah, 2014. Scale is 4697, it's going to maintain 8000, the airport's 2 o'clock, 1 3 miles. 8000, airport site, guys, 4697. 4697, flighting 325, joint final, clear visual approach, 235, right. 325 to join the visual, 35, right, go 4697. Southwest 4269, flight hitting 290, vector final approach course, it's going to maintain 9000. And a 290 heading southwest 4269. Yeah, Approach on 2285s out of uh, 220 descending via the ski to arrival. We have information for Bravo. 2285 in approach. Good afternoon. Same transition only 35 left. Expect to visual approach. Expect uh, same transition to 35 left. Expect visual approach 35 left. 1600 number to parts for contact. It's uh, 2214. 2214. 2214, they got it. Okay. With the 982 heavy contact tower 133.3. Got a 6375 caution wake turbines, 9 miles on trail, but heavy Boeing 767. 4697, contact tower 133.3. Approach 3692, 14.8, uh, descending across the Andy at uh, 13,000 with Bravo. 692, approach vector 35 left. That's expect uh, vector visual 35 left. 2214, contact tower 135.3. Zero. 5375. Southwest 
the Fort Sale Lima. Thank you. Okay, 5, Contact Tower 133.3. 375, good day. Access 623, Center 125.9. So 3373, climb and maintain, five level 230. Seven seventy one 771, over to parts, we're out of contact for downwind traffic, climb via SID. Third provisional, 35 right, southwest 4269. Is 3373, contact Denver Center 133.905. 290, vector final approach course, we're going to maintain 10,000. We're going to maintain 10,000, heading 290, sky vest 5166. 399, number approach, altimeter 3023, you can delete the speeds on the arrival for the visual approach, 1, 2 left. 771, downwind traffic, no factor, climb and maintain 5 level 230. Eight six four kilo vector number departure right of contact altimeter is three zero two three climb and maintain flight level one eight zero. Uh, good afternoon, 453344, we're with you, I'm descending to a 16.9, or to cross marks at 16.45344, uh, uh, and we have information, Foxtrot. Uh, perfect, uh, sorry, good evening, but the call from, is it something 344 with the call from? Yeah, it's 45344. 45344, good afternoon, thanks. 5093, flight heading 020, intercept 35 left, localizer. 35 left, localizer. Connected to pilot uh, edge. Southwest 4269, contact tower 133.3. Over tower, Southwest 4269. Tower 691, flight 260. 692, flight heading 290. Down, requesting uh, flight 412. Number 412, Delta Kilo, squad 0462, ident. 9157, Air Tower. 3957, thanks, Tower 135.3. Air Tower, good day, 9157. Air 4712, Denver Departure, Radar Contact. Sky 5466, Denver Departure, Radar Contact. Climb and maintain, flight level 230. 65 left. Air 
Toyota Contact, one zero miles south of the Northern Colorado Regional Airport, altimeter 3023, maintain VFR. 3023, maintain VFR, Chill. November 4th, Sierra Lima, contact Base 4 Tower, 120.2. 2325, right? 6902, fighting 300, descend to maintain 10,000. 10,000, proceed to 902. United 771, contact Denver Center on 133.9 or 5. Hey guys, how's everyone doing today? So I'm doing a uh, random stream um, because the reason I'm doing it I wasn't going to do it for just two reasons. One, the wife is going to be getting home later, so I figured I have time without having to worry about, 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 I did, about my dog barking the freaking head off when she comes in the door. And two, I had a blue screen of death last night on this computer, so I figured uh, I, I updated everything and I updated the graphics card because that's usually what causes it. I don't have anything overclocked, um, so that shouldn't be an issue. I figure I'm going to stress test it with as much crap as I can have running for video. And uh, so if, <laughs> if I should arbitrarily dip out of here, it's probably because my computer crashed. But um, I should have been able to fix that um, with all these updates. It's just sometimes these things happen. It's the first one I've had in like years. So hopefully it was just a random thing. Plus I was using Xpilot and Xpilot sucks. So Xpilot could have crashed the uh, entire Windows. Uh, that was last night, like I said. All right, today we're gonna do a little bit of a longer flight from Albuquerque here. And we're gonna fly from Albuquerque to Denver. It's a nice day for this. So, get this going here. Uh, let me get this overlay going. There we go. Let's hop in here. First things first, you need batteries. Then you need to come over here. Make sure this is all still the same I don't fly this plane that much it's fun it's a pretty fun plane it's pretty pretty good actually let's just open all plane at the gate chalks ground power units turn up the uh, cabin lighting and the batteries are 29 so we are good that way so we got external power here so we're going to do the bus tie connect those we'll turn on the passenger stuff coffee maker and all that lighting and whatnot so we got that going. Star Trek Enterprise coming to life, as I call this place. And we're gonna do nav light, logo, seat belts, smoking, emergency lights. Turn that light up. Some pedestal floor lighting.
All right, we need to get the GPS aligning. Seven Lima Yankee, how you doing today, sir? What's up with all the holes? Looks like a bullet holes. Uh, what do you mean? I'm looking at the stream on my laptop. I'm not sure I know what you mean there. Under the left EFB. Oh, I see what you mean. It's just a picture, doesn't actually do anything. Probably like a speaker. It's, pr it's probably like a speaker in the real plane. Heater, vent, defog. I'm not, I don't know. Doesn't actually have any, doesn't do anything in this aircraft. I'm going to do middle, first class. We can have up to 20, so we'll do, uh, do 15 lucky people there. Business class, we can have up to 36, so let's do 30. In economy, we can have 198, so let's do 156. And that looks good on the CG. You gotta have at least 20%. If it's not at least 20, you'll have issues. So you just add pallets if you need more weight distributed. I'm not gonna move the pallets at all. We're designed for a speaker. Yeah, I agree. It is weird. Looks like the pilot had a postal moment. <laughs> all right. Um, so we, had, we need to figure out our passengers is 213. So with this plane, you got to figure out the passengers first and then go back and do your fuel. So 213, and now we're going to zip over to Simbrief. I'm going to zip over here, put in our actually zero fuel weight that's what I want not passengers Seven eight point six. We're gonna do flight level three three zero, and that's our route. I think that's gonna be our route. I don't know. Let me run the report first and see which way they're taking off, and then we'll adjust accordingly. They were taking off three and eight earlier. I don't know if that's changed. Okay, so it's still the same. So that flight plan is valid. So I think I put in the zero fuel and seven eight six. So our trip fuel is eleven seven fifty. It's kilogram. Albuquerque. I love this website. This is super cool. Gives the winds, the clouds. I mean, it really gives a good idea of what's going on here. Like a left crosswind at four knots is just, this is my favorite new weather station outside of the, the earth weather here that I usually look at. Here's the uh, uh, here's the link 
to this weather thing if you want to check it out sometime. All right, Albuquerque, Denver. And the pressure is 3007. And like I said, we'll plan a runway eight and that's X-ray. And that's airport, I'm sure is CPDLC capable. Yep, CPDLC, I hate using that program, but I'm sure the controllers prefer it. All right, Denver is currently landing south. So we're going to do one six right. So we go to Poundage. MS3 is for runway eight, I believe. Yeah. Knock that out there. We're a heavy A359, 33. All that looks good. Filed. Give this a second. All right, on file. back over here and now we need to get our fuel so we'll click on that and destination is 11.750 did aviator stop his stream I noticed he was streaming when I was getting ready I didn't have time to check in with and say hi though, because I was updating this computer and the drivers and such. Uh, let's do APU for, I don't know, 25 minutes. Taxi time, 15. So that would be 12.6 for fuel. So passengers, we are 2.13. So we're going to implement fuel, implement. So you got passengers and fuel is loading. Come here. Pop these out. Pop those out. 5,000, temperature 1.5, dew point minus nine or Altimeter 3007, arriving and departing runway 38, final, visual. Uh, it's just random frequencies on there. That's not 2020. No, no, I'm going to do uh, 2020 tomorrow. I'm gonna, um, because they had an update and I was working on other stuff, so I didn't update the sim yet. So I'm gonna update that sim after this flight and then tomorrow I'll be flying 2020 in the CRJ and we're gonna go to the the Great Pyramids in Egypt. Uh, Pyramids of Gaza, I'm not sure. You kidding me? I think he is, he's still streaming. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. All right. Um, let's get our uh, APU stuff going. So we'll turn uh, that on. Sir, it is very cold in the cabin. The passengers are unhappy. All right, let's do an APU test. I mean, fire test. 
All these things are on. Alright, all systems are go. So. APU is coming online. And now we're going to have to get all this stuff going here. This is the cargo hold environment controls for that. So the APU is ready. I just have to turn on the bleed and the and the uh, power here. Otherwise, we are running off of. running off the external powers the external powers to be and I'll go announcements to welcome aboard ladies and gentlemen the captain and crew would like to welcome you on board this Airbus A350. If you haven't already done so, please throw your carry-on luggage underneath the seat in front of you, or in an overhead. Uh, APU is the on. Crew will do everything possible to make your flight comfortable and, and enjoyable. APU. Once Gen, I don't think it's available yet. Design. Wish you a pleasant flight experience. Oh, that's because I have to turn it on up here. Alright, APU Gen. Now, electric. Yeah, now we're running off. We got APU power. So, come back up here and we'll get the environment going with the bleed. That will cool or warm things up in the passenger compartment. Wish a night flight. Wish a nice flight, Dave. Hey, thanks, buddy. Coast pilot, greetings from Portland. FS economy went down for maintenance while I was doing a flight. Like in mid-flight. So, like it worked when you took off, and then when you went to land, you weren't able to get the credit for it. So it was all for nothing. Is that what you mean? That sucks if that's the case. And I'm cert like I am certainly with you that I don't read the forums, so I have no idea because they probably post when they're going to be doing those updates, but I don't I don't look at it. You can't confirm the end of the flight. They say it will be back. I guess you like if it's only going to be down for a little while, you probably could have kept the uh, the sim going, maybe for like an hour or two, and then try again. But you probably already shut down. see what we got for bleed air All right, APU is given bleed air and environment is warming up we don't have any flight attendant warnings or anything going on alright so engine Got 18 quarts of oil. Uh, where's hydro? Hydro. We are good on hydro. The anti skid, put that on. And then we need to turn on our surveillance stuff. So we're going to go serve, controls, standby. Turn all this stuff on. And then FMC, come down here, turn on those systems, the surveillance systems, whatever they are. Flight plan I've already filed. Now we need to do position in it. First, electrical. All that is good to go. Uh, 
yeah, that's the Adir's APU is going. And Squawk. Um, Squawk. Master. And I'll get that later. APU is all on. Overhead, seat belts, and all that stuff is on. You know what? That does remind me. I need to go into my Honeycomb Bravo and put it back to the default. Have to get that going in the background. It's on the A321 right now. I need default profile. Activate. And then we'll come up here. Reload. And bridge shows default throttle. So that's good. Wait patiently. You got to wait patiently. So did you leave your sim running, Ghost Pilot? Like you're waiting for it to come back online? If it's only like a 30 minute flight, I would just, probably just do it again. Sim is still running? Oh, okay. Where in the star do you get to loop? Where in the star do you get to loop? What do you mean, buddy? Where in the star? All batteries. I already did that. APU. Gens are going. All that get to for engine start anti-skid the air data things are these there are straight up so good there I already did all this that's the surveillance uh, in it page flight number we need to do that so we're gonna go in it we're in it to win it we are United 1399 you're at uh, Albuquerque and we want to go to Denver today and that's all I need there we're gonna go IRS it's available on this number and Albuquerque's position or the center of the airport position. I'm looking at Sky Vector on my laptop. It says 35234. So that's good enough. So align. Return. Flight number is all done. Barrow. Just have to get our ATIS, I guess. find the ATIS which is 1800 I guess a loop-de-loop -loop. where in the star is a loop-de-loop -loop? shortly <laughs> yeah we're gonna do a loop-de-loop -loop in an A350 <laughs> all right a1880 contact you have information x-ray at least we know we're with X-ray. Albuquerque International Airport. ATIS information X-ray. 1752 Zulu. Wind 040 at 4. Visibility 10. Few clouds at 25,000. Temperature 15. Dew point minus 9. Altimeter 3007. Arriving and departing runways 3, 8. Visual approaches and use VFR departures contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading, altitude, if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information x-ray. Alright, we're current with x-ray and let me see here. The elevation at Albuquerque. Let's, uh, let's pull up Albuquerque. ABQ elevation 5354 so that's a, a match and that's a match 
So those altimeter settings are accurate for the pressure. And we're going to have to get our clearance. Have you ever tried to do a loop-de-loop? -loop? Nah. I do enough loop-de-loops in DCS and the Hornet that I get my fill of loop-de-loops in the, in the Hornet. <laughs> Barrel rolls and pirouettes, all sorts of cool, cool stuff with DCS fighter jets. But no, I, I, I try to do a little bit more realism when I fly on Pilot Edge and stuff like that. I don't really usually mess around with these airliners. They're complicated enough. They're fun enough for me to to where I don't feel like I need to do loop-de-loops. <laughs> you can walk from Albuquerque to Denver. Yeah, you could probably walk from coast to coast, but uh, do you want to? <laughs> That'd be a long walk. This is like 300 and something miles. 318 miles. How can you know if it's not possible without trying? I flew yesterday from Denver to LA with a chopper. Holy cow. How long did that take you, Gizmo? Flight time, what, two, two and a half hours maybe? My flight times are like 50 minutes usually. Gizmo, did you use SAS or autopilot because real heli pilots hand fly only? That's not a trip for an A350. No, you're right, but it's a trip that I'm uh, physically able to do. I can only sit here for so long. So... Basically, when my uh, flights are excess of 300 miles, I typically go with my heavies. So, you know, I use this one or I use like the 767, which I don't really fly that much anymore. Um, but yeah, that's how I usually do it. If it's over 300 miles, so 300, 350 miles, I tend to do the tallest A321 or the uh, or this one, the A350. That's just preferable preference, personal preference. over here and we're going to sign in and see if we can get our um, clearance hundred and fifty knots is four hours and thirty minutes wow Also, if on XP11, have you tried out the Healy course? Cyclone? Alright. There we go. Got our ATC message, so we'll mash that. Go to next, we'll hit standby, so that way the message won't disappear because it will time out after 90 seconds and then you have to ask ATC to resend it and that's a pain. If you hit standby, it will stay there indefinitely. You're clear to Denver via MS3, MS, then as file. We're gonna climb via the SID, so we'll be brief in the SID. Expect flight level 330 within 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 127.4. And we're going to squawk 3101. Thirty one oh one. So we're gonna accept it. That closes out our CBTLC. Which is different than a PDC, because a PDC you only read and you don't have anything to accept. CPTLC you have to actually accept it or reject it. So that's the difference between a PDC and a CBTLC. All right, 3101. All that is good. So let me come back to this source because it's just better. And I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to get my weather injector going. Desktop, real world weather. get the weather downloading 
Gizmo says you can only hand fly through the Rockies. It has no pressure through, I guess. All right. Um, I think we're done with the Barrow. PFD heading, all that. It's good to go. All right. So transfer the weather and then we'll look at uh, cost index and tropa. So we're going to go waiting for this weather to reload. Should take about five seconds. There we go. So I'll go Skymax, force weather reload. And then come over here and I don't know how to turn this to daylight it's kind of annoying tropa is TRP so that would be oh I was like what the hell looking at the wrong number all right top of climb so three six two three five five three fifty so we'll do three five five for tropa We're going to cruise at 330, and the cost index is 86. Yeah, 86. So we'll punch in 86, and let's see, we're going to have a like a crosswind so the crosswind is uh, let's say 76 knots so we'll say a headwind of about uh, 40 yeah we'll do a headwind of 40 so HD 40 Cruise temperature is minus 50, so that's correct. All right. All right, so departure. We're going to plan runway 8. Runway 8 on the Hemez 3. There's no trans. So we'll insert that, and that just goes to Hemez. And I don't think we have any airways. Nope, it's just going to be sit in a star. So it's not too difficult. So we'll insert that. We'll click here on Denver. And Denver, we're going to we're gonna aim for uh, RNAV Zulu 16 right, so 16 right, RNAV 16 right, Zulu, which is an RMP approach, via cliff, via stick, I think, no, T bar, T bar. That's the ski. That's the other one I was thinking of, actually. T bar two via, I think it's gondola. Gondola. So we're going to assume 
the T-Bar 2 arrival from the gondola transition and then we're going to plan the RNAV 16 right Zulu from the initial approach fix of Cliff and we'll punch that in there and then we have a disco that we can get rid of so I'll just uh, between the sit and the star so you right click and left click delete and then you insert and you got yourself a flight plan Okay, so we got the flight plan ends. We go back to init and fuel. So we need our weights. So our zero fuel weight is over here. We got 178.6. And that's 22% on the CG. And our block fuel is right here. So we'll say 12, five. Punch that in there. And we're gonna do um, pastures are 213 so we'll update this to 213 and then I need performance so that's an hour extra fuel and four and a half tons extra so that is good so now we need our performance so it should be automatically in here so we're going to go to perf and I don't worry about that stuff. So we're going to do flaps. Um, we got plenty of runways. So we're going to do 1 plus F takeoff config that Airbus likes to do. 157. 157. 161 and 3. Uh, flaps 1. And we're going to flex 47. We're going to flex, and the elevation here at Albuquerque is 5.3, so that would be 5.4. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 would be like 5,900. So I'll make this 59. 59, 69. So this is 500 AGL. This is 1,000 AGL. This is one engine out. This is 500 feet um, for climb thrust. So the uh, computer will tell us to go from um, takeoff thrust to climb thrust at this altitude. Not going to worry about that, any of that. Out transition altitude is flight level 180. Uh, there's no return SID we can worry about here. So let's turn this on to plan 40 miles. And we'll go flight plan. We'll see here. We'll scroll down our flight plan, make sure there's no brakes. Looks good to me. Put that back on arc. I don't need those. I don't need those displayed right now. It's all good. All right, APU is on autopilot setup. So we are climbing via the SID. And the SID says. Um, Sky Vector, we're doing Albuquerque to Denver, we're doing the Hemas 3. So we're going to take off to 58, no higher than 230 knots. We have to be above 12,000 at green, but below 250 knots. 
even though you're above 10,000 feet, we still have a speed restriction until we're above 12,000 feet, and then we can kick it into overdrive. Top altitude, flight level 200. So we'll uh, we'll set for 200. So we'll bring this up. Yeah, we'll crank this up to 200. We should have climb and nav in blue, which we do, so we know that the airplane will handle the restrictions. We'll put on the restrictions for another tool at our disposal. The APU gen is on, I believe. We'll double check though. Yeah, we're running off the APU. So I guess we can turn off these external powers. So we'll do turn that one off. Yeah, that's off. Now we can turn off the other one. So we're both off. So now we can remove all that stuff. So let's turn that back off. Come over here. So we can remove those. And we're going to close all the doors. Going to get rid of all that. The brake is on. And we'll do doors automatic. Doors on auto. Attention all flight attendants, doors automatic. Alright. Now we can get our push back. So we'll delete that so we can get a better looking one there. Better turn. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. Alright, while they're coming up, turn on all these buttons and switches and stuff that I have no idea what they're doing but I know an Airbus you want lights out and the fault only means they're not in operation right now anyway because they're engine driven turn all these on to include that crew supply oxygen see what they have to say it might be a tattoo warm in the cabin cool things off a little bit for our passengers so the top is nice and dark that's what we want okay all doors and hatches are closed ready to connect and we're gonna squawk 3101 uh, mode on. That's fine. Go ahead and lock our door. Cabin door for safety. And does this have a SAM gate or is it auto gate? I think this is uh, auto. Yeah, this is auto gate. So we don't have to worry about any of that. All the pumps are on. We'll just have to turn on it was stuff. So fuel quantity is fine. Zero fuel weight. We got all that. Ecam. So connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. Seat belts are good. I called the pushback guy. So engine start. Beacon light on. Do beacon light. Ecam mode auto, which is lights out. And we'll do engine start select. So. First, let's make sure we are clear. We are, so we'll move start on back. Attack. And you may start engines. So we're gonna put that into ignition. Do master one. Got rotation.
avionics is turning like it's supposed to. We'll get uh, engine one available here in a moment. Once we have that available, then we can crank on engine two. Any day. There we go. So we come down here, crank on engine two. Same thing, we'll wait for that to come available. Engine two is cranking up. Do our safety demonstration. Ladies and gentlemen, we request your full attention as the flight attendants demonstrate the safety features of this aircraft. When the seat belt sign illuminates, you must fasten your seat belt, insert the metal fittings one into the other, and tighten by pulling on the loose end of the strap. To release your seat belt, lift the upper portion to the wait for that to go back. Operation complete. You'll set parking brakes. Throughout the flight, as we may experience turbulence. Disconnecting to Stand by. Have eight emergency exits. Four on the left side of the cabin and four on the right. Please take a few moments now to locate the Wipers work. Exit. In some cases, that's available. Have to start. Engine start selector to norm. APU bleed. Uh, off, off, and off. Anti ice. We do need uh, window heat. Pedo heat. Ground spoilers. We'll go ahead and arm those. Flaps will set for flaps one plus F takeoff config. You'll see here. Trim is 23, which is done automatically on this aircraft. Check our controls, flight controls. Yeah, right, left, right, left. Up and down. Looks like all that is working. Let's make sure the reversers work on this, which I think is straight back. Let's see. in reverse. You have to give power for reverse. That works. And then I have to toggle those reversers. That's why I have it as a reminder to remind myself how to work the reversers if I need them. Sign an autopilot button, I believe. So, taxi lights are up here. So, we're going to do those and those. The APU is off, I believe. Yeah, APU is off. Engine. Owen Gizmo says that's uh, Rockies between Colorado and Utah. It's the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's the Rocky Mountains. And I've actually been in the Rocky Mountains in uh, real life. I went to a place called Estes Park. 
in Colorado and it was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. It's hard to breathe up there though because the air is so thin because you know Denver is 5,500 feet and then the mountain that I we wanted we did a tour in the mountain and uh, it was like totally there I and mean, it was so freaking cold up there that's what I remember most was how freezing it was. Lead air, air conditioning and heating, and pressure is all good. Leave that on auto. Flaps are set. Pitch trim, ecam status is good. Nose wheel lights, I did that. Park brake, thrust reverse, I checked that. Auto brake, FT, uh, RTO hit that cooling system overheat I don't know what causes that I don't know what that means. Let's see if I can do a quick Google search. anything I don't know what's causing that maybe I don't know I don't care it's not gonna mess with anything I don't think let's get our ATIS airport ATIS information Yankee 1852 Zulu wind variable at 5 Oh, I guess it cleared itself zero. by doing that. Few clouds at one zero thousand. Few clouds at two five thousand. Temperature now. one six. Dew point minus nine or altimeter three zero zero five. Arriving and departing runways three eight. Visual approaches and use VFR departures contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information Yankee. Albuquerque International Airport, ATIS Information Yankee, 1852 Zulu, wind variable at 5, visibility 10, few clouds at 10,000, few clouds at 25,000, temperature 16, dew point minus 9, or altimeter 3005, arriving and departing runway 3, 8, visual approaches and use VFR departures contact clearance delivery, advise on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested, Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information, Yankee. All right, we are current with Yankee. And ground control. Is... Point Niner. Point nine are up here and tower. It's one twenty point three. Luckily, I was able to clear that error. It was the third leg for my North America crossing with the copter like on the second leg Jill from Chicago to Denver. I had to fly constantly right uphill. Right it was a boring environment. 
Huh. If this economy came back, but everything is messed up, I suddenly owe 85000 on my Kodiak? Oh my god. I'm going to have to look at my uh, account here now. That sucks. They'll fix it, though. Hopefully. Alright, so that was pre-taxi. same chart on my laptop. And refresh the weather. Zero five zero at or actually it's variable at five knots, so the winds are fine. So the perf data and all that is still the same. And I'm on ground control. I think I'm squawking. 3101. Good afternoon, Albu Albu Albuquerque Ground, United 1399 Heavy, located at the terminal with Yankee, ready to taxi. United 1399 Heavy, Albuquerque Ground, runway 8, taxi via Alpha. Runway 8 via Alpha, United 1399 Heavy. So that makes it easy. TBM one out for TBM nine. We're coming out of the executive hangar area. I'd like to request taxi to two eight right for one pattern. TBM one alpha whiskey, building ground squad zero, two, three, four. Oh your your fail zero, two, three, four, was the second leg. Oh. It was the third leg for Lord my Alpha North Wiz, America crossing with it. Wait. Uh, the right side, please, for one off. Have you read that part? Taking your position. Uh, we are from the executive. Yeah, I wouldn't worry it too much about the 85 Lord grand coast pilot. But as soon as I get in the Lord air, I'm going to look at my account because uh, I've got two planes on my own that Juliet. I know I Alpha. own, <laughs> so I shouldn't owe anything on them. On hotel. Hotel Golf Juliet Alpha, runway 2 right across the 28 left approach area. TBM 1 Alpha Whiskey. Alright, let's do a takeoff config check. So Gear 7 Golf Lima, Alpha Ram, this frequency. All green. Okay, I'll do the ramp at this frequency. Gear 7 Golf Lima, thanks a lot for flying. Yeah, do. Yeah. Seats for Sky takeoff. Sky 55 Albuquerque, are you up? Sky I 55, I'm ready to. To taxi, uh, so I'll just contact them. Okay, problem is your identing and approach is wondering what's going on. Is your ident button stuck? Uh, let me correct that. I don't know. Not sure. It's a, it's kind of and then we're going to leave PAX on. We have 13, almost 14,000 foot of runway here. Billings so Tower, Arrow 241, Joe, right. Strokes and uh, landing lights. Eight right, cleared for the option. Again, wind three zero zero at one three. Clear for the option on two eight right. I need this to be a full stop taxi back, please, sir. That's part of the option. Roger that. Thank you. Tower departures one twenty seven four. Seattle ground walker five forty to signature ramp ready to taxi for VFR departure to the west with Sierra. If this economy is down Seattle again, I'm sure they'll fix it eventually. Uh, it's probably good that it's Tango down again. <laughs> means they're going to fix your uh, your bad credit there. You got a bad credit score. Upper <laughs> uh, Creek Tower, United 1399 Heavy, holding short runway 8. United 1399 Heavy, Upper Creek Tower, runway 8, cleared for takeoff and verbal 5. Runway 8, clear for takeoff, United 13, they're not heavy. Building is ground, one, TV one Alpha Whiskey, can we take information, uh, correction, can we take intersection Delta? Number 1 Alpha Whiskey, runway 28 right at Delta, taxi via Juliet and Delta. 
Delta 288, we're not whiskey. So, we're gonna climb to Tyler. Gotta be above 5,860 at Tyler. And we'll go left. Albuquerque ground, sky high, 8255, uh, ready to taxi uh, at April with the uh, Yankee, and I hope the identity issue is fixed. Sky 855, it's not. Um, your identity function is still on. All right. Before you get airborne, we have to get that fixed. Engines, not 50%. Sky high, 855, roger. Those are armed. All that is ready. Okay. Star TV one off whiskey. Breaks off. Intersection Delta two eight right. Ready to go. TV one off whiskey. Hold short of runway two eight right at Delta for landing traffic. Engines are stable. Flex forty seven. SRS is active. Waiting on the airspeed. Waiting on the airspeed. Airspeed's alive. Our way, plenty of runway. Gauge rocket boosters, yeah, you need it with this thing. Positive, right? Gear One coming up. Left contact ground with your request. We'll we're going to climb to 5,800 uh, straight out here. TB1 Alpha Whiskey, runway 28 right at Delta, cleared for takeoff. Just off, hand flying traffic. in for right now. Two we're going to go to climb for us. 6,000. Pitch down so we can gain some speed here. And we'll turn on the autopilot because it turns better than I do. Billings ground. Oh, two for one, you'll let off us clear of uh, eight right. As long as I'm still request climbing in the uh, turn, uh, that's Bravo. important. Uh, request taxi back to two eight right for a. Uh, Our uh, max uh, speed Billings is 250. Ground, two fifty. Right taxi via Alpha. So the uh, two right via alpha, two slats, I alpha. mean, the flaps will retract. I mean, uh, yeah, flaps will retract automatically, so I didn't do anything. At about 230 knots, I'll take out the rest of the actual flaps over here. At 1399 Heavy, contact departure. Over to departure at United 1399 Heavy, see you. So we're going to go to 127.4. And we are with Albuquerque departure. Albuquerque departure, United 1399, heavy climbing via the MS-3, leaving 8,300. At 1399, Albuquerque departure, radar contact. All right, gear is up and we'll uh, undo those things. Packs are on, flaps are up, gear is up. There's no icing conditions to worry about. Let's look at the uh, takeoff. Spoilers are all good. Anti ice is good. Santa 66, that. Mike, I've got no good. traffic observed between you and Mesa Airport. Your radar services are terminated. Squawk and maintained via fire and free exchange is approved. Have a good day. 6 kilo, Mike, thanks for being here. This engines actually sound pretty cool. 10,000 feet, turn off the landing lights and the nose lights there. Push this out to 40 miles and we'll put this side to plan and we'll push it out to 100 and 300 miles or so. Billings Tower, Arrow 41, Julia, let off a holding short 28 right. We're 241 Juliet Alpha Billings Tower, make right traffic, report midfield on down one, right 28 right, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, 28 right midfield, uh, call out and right traffic. 7G takeoff. <laughs> T1 Alpha Whiskey, midfield, request a full stop. 
One out, voice, Roger. Someone needs to go over to Aviator Stream and tell him I said hi. <laughs> I would do it, but I'm not that great at multitasking. At 1399 Heavy, contact Albuquerque Center 134.6. Upper Kirky Center, 134.6, United 1399 Heavy. All right, so when you go to center, you don't need to say heavy anymore. So, 134.6, and we are just United 1399. Number one Alpha Whiskey, runway two right, clear to land. Wind 300 at 13. We're going to be picking up speed here in a moment. Upper Kirky Center, United 1399, climbing via the MS3, leaving 15,700. United 1399, Upper Kirky Center, climb and maintain flight level 330. Climb and maintain flight level 330, United 1399. So, we'll bring us up to Gable Power on departure, turn 330. right, heading 230, runway. On our way, we should be picking up speed two, now five, since zero, we're past four. that. Uh, that restriction of uh, 250 and we are we're gaining speed and we don't really have to worry about the uh, departure anymore we'll keep it up there and we'll climbing away so we'll go to announcements Flight 1989 heavy pain ground ladies and gentlemen our aircraft continues uh, runway to one six right taxi like via kilo one. And all flights of our airline are not smoking. For your safety, the laboratories have been equipped with smoke detectors. Damaging or disconnecting the smoke detectors is strictly prohibited. Uh, On the overhead, do that checklist here because we are at standard. So and a flight attendant button. standard. The standard. Barrow cruise set. Anti-ice seat belts in the back and center of the airplane. For your safety, when seated, we recommend to keep your seat belts fastened. Seat belts off. E can memo. Walker is five forty radar contact south team. No memos. Walker yeah, five forty contact good. departure. That's fine. So we're good to go. Walker 540, shell departure, Get rid roger. Of that. Get rid of that. All that's left is Denver. Number one, Jewett Alpha, runway 28 right, cleared for the option. Wind 300 at 13. So our arrival into Denver is the uh, T bar 2. 2702 is Denver Center usually, so I'm going to have that on already. All right, T-bar 2, and then we're going to do an uh, RNAV approach. Exact 1989 uh, heavy, right. paint tower runway, 1-6 right, cleared for takeoff. RNAV, 1-6 right, Zulu. And then the airport. And then I want the... Uh, Bravo Gates. Park on the south side of Bravo somewhere. Walker 540, resume on navigation, maintain VFR to below 4,500. I'll land on 1 6 right. Got like 16,000 foot of runway, so that should be enough. <laughs> uh, this is the approach. And I'll brief all that when we get a little bit closer. And this is our Number arrival one, over the Rocky Mountains. Around, Always my pleasure. And we turn the seatbelts off. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign, and you may now move about the cabin. Sky 55 knots still on. Uh, maybe just try turning your transponder off and then back on. See if that All right, fixes let's it. see what my FS economy looks like. 
What client are you using? Oh, no, it says it's down. Okay. Yeah, the whole service is down. Oakland Center walking 292 level at 16,005. It'd be down. Walker 292, Oakland Center Pass, Roll Hotel, 2993. 2993, Walker 292. FedEx 1989, contact departure. Hey, Das, if you're around, are there any um, high ratings awesome that you want me to right go over while we're here? I can't remember if you had a if you had asked me a question on one right of them button. or if it was someone else I might have been thinking of someone else so if that wasn't you my bad but I can cover an I rating if someone wants me to or you know verbally because obviously I'm not flying any I ratings FedEx 1989 heavy Seattle departure Coast pilot I wonder if Navigraph would be up for taking over FS economy <laughs> Right. They're conquerors, man. Navigraph are conquerors. They're just taking over. But you know what? I like Navigraph. I like their style. They're doing a great job. And they didn't and make uh, sim brief yeah, still the payware on thing, and which identity. is super nice. I'm on the third one, but I know I'll have issues starting the I-6. So, okay, do you want me to look at the I-6? Walker 540, clear the Bravo airspace now. Let me pull up the I-6 real quick. I'm going to read it myself, and then I'll uh, take a look. Sky 540, and then we'll is terminated. It's brief it. VFR, free exchange is approved every day. I-6, precision okay. approach. That's what it is. Is there anything specific on the I-6 that you have a question on? Or... Number one, Juliet Alpha, stay request. If there's a part of the I-6 that you have a question on, it'll probably be the easiest, because this Juliet is pretty Alpha, lengthy. Down into the ramp on Alpha, day. Pretty lengthy. Not sure what part you would want me to cover. X 1989 heavy turn left heading 210. It's getting into holds. The I 6 does holds, huh? It has us doing full approach that has a hold. Do you mean the ILS or the approach has a hold? For a missed approach or something? Let me let me take a look at this. Um, let's see, the description is. I don't want to change views quite yet till I know what I'm looking at because otherwise it might be boring for people watching. Um, probably be easier to bring up the procedure while I'm in the airplane. It's the ILS into John Wayne. Okay, let me see. Description, Sid from LAX with a full IL, ILS runway 20 right approach at John Wayne Sands sec vectors. Learning objectives, understand and comply with a Sid. Understand and comply with via the Sid instructions in including the need to communicate climbing via the SID with each controller. So that line right there, like you probably heard me, every time I switched controllers, uh, like on this departure, I had to call in the uh, appropriate uh, SID, which was, I, I think I already deleted it. Let me go back. A, B, yeah, 1399, two. contact Denver Center 127.02. Denver Center 127.02, United 1399. All right, so I'm going to Denver, so we'll check in whether current and 
altitude. Denver Center, United 1399, level 322 for 330. Yeah, 1399, Denver Center, roger, thank you. So you always give current and assigned. So we're coming up to our cruise. How did I get? FedEx 1989, heavy contact, Seattle Center, 125.1. Departure, it was the Hemis 3. So when I switched from tower to departure, I said um, United Third, or I'm sorry, I said Albuquerque departure, United 1399 heavy, because I'm not classified as a heavy aircraft. I am climbing via the Hemes 3, so that means he knows I'm going to abide by every single restriction that is published on this SID. I'm climbing via the Hemes 3, leaving whatever altitude I'm currently at. I don't have to give a top altitude because it's already published on the SID somewhere. That's not it. That's not it. Here it is. 200. That's a top altitude. So he knows I can't go higher than 200 until he tells me to. So when I switched from departure to Albuquerque Center, I was able to drop off the heavy, but yet I still had to say I'm climbing via the Hemes 3. So if an airport has five or six different named SIDs, then you say I'm climbing via whichever named SID you're currently on because then they know which way you're going because SIDs go in different directions. They leave an airport in different directions depending upon the SID. So even though I switched to center and I was able to drop the heavy because they don't need it for separation purposes at that point, I still said I was climbing via the Hemes 3, leaving whatever altitude I was currently at. And then the center climbed me to flight level 330. That in itself removed me from the SID. So after that, I don't have to say I'm on a SID anymore. I just say Altitude leaving, altitude assigned, if that makes sense. And Aviator just rated with 10. Hey, thanks, buddy. So I didn't get like an alert or something. That's weird. I need to work on my alerts. I should have gotten an alert for a raid. Did something come across the stream as a raid? Like, did it show a notification of the raid other than you guys putting in the raid? <laughs> Caught me right in the middle of a SID lesson. Good timing. Now I get to board 10 more other people. The I-3 and the, and the I-4. But welcome, guys. We are heading to Denver. It's what I was asked about you about because the chart says 016, but they say 014 for outbound. Okay. Um see here so the ILS wasn't paying attention to the video <laughs> okay so let's bring up the ILS for John Wayne so that would be SNA John Wayne ILS 20 right bring this up here And if Aviator's here, he can probably help clear up any uh, mistake I make because he's he's the expert. He's way better at this stuff than I am. He's pilot edge controller, so he knows his stuff. Um, it says 016 on the chart, right? So 016 is the outbound course. So you would actually set your course for 196. Um, course approach is 196 so what would 014 mean like what is 014 I'll 
pop that back up in a little bit. I did see the chat mention raid, but didn't hear anything extra above you on the video. Hmm. I have to check uh, my alerts for raids. I might not have an alert set. I'm going to make a note of that. Alert for raid. So I'll look into that. I know it's a stream elements thing. It has all my uh, alerts in it. Five Albuquerque ground runway three taxi via Foxtrot. Top of descent twenty oh seven. So we got about seven minutes, ten minutes or so. Then we'll start on our way down. We can do a level off. Later with the pullman. The captain has turned off the fast. I don't think they updated the text in years. Oh, that's a good point, Seven Lima Yankee. You know what? It says to fly outbound of 014 to Sager, but the chart says 016. Oh, okay. Okay, that's that's why Seven Lima Yankee is he's right on track. So let me look at the so the 014 is two degrees different from what's shown here right that's because the magnetic north changes uh, a certain amount of degrees like 0 0.002 or 0, 0 i can't remember exactly but magnetic north changes every year or maybe even uh, every couple months by a certain percentage and that's why nav data another reason to keep your nav data up to date is because it will correct your your course headings for these ILSs because the magnetic north changes. So when it says fly outbound 014 to Sager, it's actually talking about this Sager, but you want to ignore the 014. You want to say it's 016. Always go off what the current chart says, and the current chart is, uh, is usually a date. It's usually, there we go. Apparently it's upside down no matter which way I flip it. Uh, well, okay, it's upside down, but April of 21, 22. So you know it's a current chart. And if I look at the, uh, let me see here. Uh, where is the 014 actually? Zero one four, yeah, yeah. This is exactly the issue. Okay, so let me show you this real quick. So that's a very good point. Seven Lima Yankee brought this up because see here it shows. Go to zero one four. See how it shows zero one four? Well, the uh, SNA. The chart is updated to 016 so you got 016 014 this is old nav data information because the magnetic north is definitely different and that's another reason why runways change their numbers so one year it might be 20 right but in five years it could be uh, um, 21 right or maybe 19 right I can't remember if the numbers go up or down really but I do know that the runway numbers will change um, sometimes. Like, uh, I know for a fact I have old scenery for uh, Idaho, Idaho Falls. So this was actually runway 20. In my scenery, it shows 20 and 2. So I guess, yeah, the numbers increase 
over time. So this used to be runway two and this used to be runway two zero for Idaho Falls, but now it's two one because the magnetic north varies. See this one one eight or whatever the variance you got true and magnetic. So these ILSs are based off of magnetic. So this is an old data. That's a very good question. I'm glad you brought that up. But yeah, that's why runway uh, numbers will change over time. All right, we're coming up to our top of descent here. So we're gonna have to do some drinks and light entertainment here. Hey, thanks for the follow there, buddy. Much appreciated. Left turn into the parallel entry. I think you don't want to make a right turn for the parallel because the right turns are un are the unprotected side. Correct. Left to turn to intercept the 016 right turns as Sky published. Okay, yeah. I see where he's saying with that too. Runway three, clear for takeoff. All right, let me check a few things. Let's do some ECAM checks, then I'll uh, come back to that John Wayne thing. All right, so that is fine. Doors, all flares are still uh, down. Fuel is relatively even. Walk to two radar services are terminated. Squawk maintain via fire. Exchange approved. That's good. That's good. Squawk via fire. Exchange approved. Walk to Hydro pressure is good. APU is off. FedEx 1989. Lead air. Air conditioning is on. FedEx 1989. Good and pressure is. All good. And D Adis, cheat real quick on the laptop. Seattle Center, FedEx 1989, level 350. Denver. FedEx 1989, Seattle Center, roger. Denver's landing south still, so we're still good. So we've got about 40 miles to go. And then we'll be good. And Rough Edge, hey buddy, recognize your voice for the frequencies. Yeah, I live on this network. <laughs> I live on Pilot Edge during the day. I fly every day on Pilot Edge um, at least once, sometimes twice. But what I usually do is try to find uh, on VATSIM some ATC that's online. And I know Aviator, I just learned actually that Aviator uh, controls uh, Fort Worth on VATSIM some evenings so I've been trying to fly in the, into there more when he's online and, uh, and there's another guy another pilot edge controller that controls um, Fort Worth he, he did tower one night when I was flying into there and then there's another PE controller that was on Miami he was controlling Miami Center on VATSIM last night so yeah I uh, you'll hear my voice all the time because I'm retired and I'm disabled so this is what I do to past my time and I just started streaming like maybe a year ago and it was just so I could talk shop during the day and Sky stuff like that contact up cricket departure but yeah welcome aboard bud um, that says but the chart shows the parallel being left of the intercept outbound and it says to do left 180 degree turn in the ratings I have yet to send via the t-bar Two arrival, runway 16 right transition, the Denver altimeter 3022. Descend via the T bar 2 arrival, 16 right transition, 3022, United 13. Actually, I'm sorry, I read it wrong. Denver's landing north. Uh, it's going to be descend via with the runway 35 left transition, at least 35 left. Correction, landing north of uh, 35 left transition on the T bar 2, United 1399. Crap. All right, so let me see. Sky 55 Albuquerque departure radar contact. I'm maintain one one thousand. Which so I can change it to T bar. We're coming up to Barry, which is I got 40 miles, so I'm going to switch this real fast. I always have to write down the one I'm at, and then we'll come down here. We'll do. 
going to bury and then lifty, so I'm going to go. Now I'm loading in scenery, naturally. Okay, so 3-5 left. It's going to be an ILS. So 3-5 left. Which I think is a cat 3. It's a cat... Yeah, it's a cat 3. So that means I could auto land if I needed to. So 3-5 left. ILS 3-5 left via the initial approach fix, which is Ladora. And we're on the T-bar. 2. And we do want all that in there, and then I'm going to insert it, but first I need to go to heading mode so we're going to do Sky High 55, mode. turn right heading 320, join Victor 263 northbound, resume our navigation. Insert. And then we are straight ahead to Barry, Barrow. I already forgot what it is. Hang on a second here. B, 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 B. Um, position, direct. To Barrow, direct to insert Barrow. There we go. And what's my top of descent? So we've got wind, wind request, return. And we are at our top of descent now, so I'm going to lower this, and we'll start on our way down. And the 3-5 left transition is 13,000, so I'll drop this down to 13. And since we are leaving our last assigned altitude, we'll let Denver know. I think I'm with Denver. 27 on 2. Denver Center, United 1399 is leaving 330. Roger. All right, let me bring up. I'm going to have to change all these charts on my laptop now. I've got all the wrong ones. All the wrong ones. Three, five, left from the Dora. Uh, where's three, five, left? Three five left. I'll put on the constraints and lift. Let me see. So T bar and The T-bar is above flight level 200, so we're going to intercept our uh, path right about here. So we're tracking. So let me do uh, start descent. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to remind you that use of all electronic devices during descent and landing is prohibited as it may interfere with the navigation. Of the so now we're going to be coming off this way. We're going to have to abide by these altitude and speed restrictions on our way. So we'll keep an eye on that. I updated the winds. Descend altitude button. Alright, and what is Denver's ATIS? Don't need that anymore. I'm going to be doing uh, three. No point on file. Approach three five left is a cat two or three. Uh, One twenty five point six. Salt Lake Center Walker at three ninety airborne ten thousand five hundred passing. Oh, sorry, passing through ten thousand uh, six hundred. We're twelve miles uh, east of Idaho Falls. I board at Denver. Okay. 
Walker 390, Salt Lake Center, maintain VFR, pronounce Squawk 6411, ident. 6411, ident, Walker 3 Denver's approach is usually 12035, so I'll get that ready on comm. And there's no icing conditions. Let's pull up what the METAR looks like here. Walker Coast pilot contact, says uh, they switched again the on you. They, they have done that every single time I fly into Denver. <laughs> and Rough Edge says, here, let me back this chat up. I Walker think I missed some stuff. Is, uh, cleared to Denver Airport to be a direct Jackson as pilot. I have yet to hear you on frequency. That's because you're always uh, at work when I'm flying DAS. <laughs> and I'll, I will cover that ILS stuff again. Um, I do all my ref edge says that he does all his flying on pe fly most afternoons and evenings too so yeah that's yeah that's why you know my voice yep i fly basically the same times you do then <laughs> um, so it's not as seven lima link yankee says where it's left to intercept then right turn it's left to intercept outbound and left turn 225 to make the teardrop shape. However, the chart looks like you should intercept on that parallel line. Then right turn in, so like a downwind base. No yeah, I'll look at that chart again. I think I know what you're talking about. You got a meeting? All right, let me know when you get back and uh, I'll look at that chart again. Departure frequency 109.6 and squawk 5577. You just heard me on, uh, um, oh, really? I wasn't listening. <laughs> 24, you correct? I think I'm high on this. Let me go into, uh, open descent let's so do the hand I'm going to open descent we'll bleed off speed that faster that way I'm adding in a bunch of uh, brakes bring this out to 20 miles so it be above 20 I think I'm like yeah I'm above the glide path to get down to 13,000 at Ladora. So let's see if we can pick up Denver's ATIS. Runway 34 right, runway 35 left, and runway 35 right approach in use. Multiple hour Nutsu approaches in use. VFR departures contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information Delta. Delta, what's the ultimate? Denver International Airport. ATIS information Delta. 1953 Zulu. Wind 050 at 8. Visibility 10. Few clouds at 9000. Temperature minus 1. Dew point minus 1 2. Altimeter 3022. Arriving runway 34 left. 34 right, 35 left, 35 right. Departing runway 34 right, 35 left, 25 8. Visual approaches in use. Okay, ILS 139, contact Denver approach 120.35. Denver approach 120.35, United 1399. Alright, we are current with Delta. So I'm going to want ILS 35. Walker 390, contact to Salt Lake Center, 135.77. To keep an eye on the uh, altitude here, I have to be above 21,000, so let's do back to managed. Missing the glide path, interestingly enough. Denver approach, United 1399 heavy, descending via the T bar 2, 35 left transition, leaving flight level 211. Current with Delta, request ILS 35 left approach from Ladora. 
Hey, 39 Heavy, Denver, approach, Denver Alpha 3022, thank you for Delta after Lador, cleared ILS from a 35 left approach. After Lador, cleared ILS, 35 left approach, and on 13, line 9 Heavy. Walker 390, Salt Lake Center, climbing to info level 330. I guess the glide path is not showing for some reason. It might be a bug, I don't know. But we're on path, close enough. So, I don't think I have to worry about Two, so we're gonna do 3022. Uh, do that. And 3022. Season 24, Fresno ground, push on to. Uh, be below 15,000. Alpha, yep, correct, sorry about that. And be deep in. Alright, Legion 24, push on to Alpha, the crew facing southeast. Let's make sure our weather is reflecting true clouds. <laughs> Seven Lee Mianke hears all of us on frequency right now. <laughs> know if I'm on path if I'm below 15,000 feet by here if I'm not then I'm just gonna have to do this manually because usually I'd have a green dot that we can follow down but it's not it's not there so I don't know what to deal this rad nav in it nav aids ILS for three five left is 108.5 so all that is correct curious to see if yeah this is not right so take over a little bit because there is no green dot and here we have to be at uh, 14. We have to be at 14 at Cush. So let me make sure I don't blast through that. And we'll do flaps one. And Denver, I mean, um, 2385. Might be final approach. If not, tower is 133.3. And are we on? Let me see. Sky 855, contact Albuquerque Center 124.32. The winds at Denver is. 124.32, Sky 855, thank you. 060 at 8. Almost to 14. And the temperature Thank is clear. minus Sky one. Hawk, turn to go, Baba Mike Oscar, I am part of Seattle Information Hotel. And that's 1023. And uh, it's Cat 3, so there's Sky no minimums. Sky 855, Albuquerque Center, Santa Fe, altimeter 3008. 60 at 8. CG, BMO, paint clearance, cleared Seattle Airport. Pain 6, departure. Radar vectors, pain, VOR, then it's filed. Climbing team 2000, expect 3000, 5 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 120.4. Yeah, Squawk um, 7052. Super high, I don't know why the... Clear to the Seattle airport. What this pain issue is start. today. Pain 6, departure, radar vectors, pain, VOR, then it's filed. Climb and maintain 2000, expect 3000, 5 minutes after Maybe departure. because I changed the flight frequency plan, it totally lost the... Four. The VNAV aspect of it. Charlie Golf, Bravo, Mike Oscar. CGBMO, read back correct. So, let me see. Ladora is 13. Get it, 1399. Contact Denver Approach, 123.85. 
Denver approach, 123.8599 heavy. 2385, let's go flaps two. Denver approach, United 1399 heavy, leaving 13,400. United 1399, heavy Denver approach, Roger, Denver altimeter 3022. 3022, United 1399 heavy. 133.3 is our final. And we see this next one is, we'll say, 11,000. Start that down. And we'll hold the uh, speed up there. Drop our gear. Totally sidetracked, but it's all good. Two flaps, three. And we should be in... Um, activate approach phase. Go ahead and do that. We're good to go. Guess we're not close enough for the ILS signal to show up. Damn it. I hit the wrong button. a little bit low. It's not sh showing the right ILS. It might be too far away for it to show up. is the reason you're going to Colorado. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I still don't have an ILS signal. Oh, there we go. As soon as I said that, <laughs> so let's come over here and we'll hit approach. Do autopilot one and two for dual <coughs> cat three if we wanted it. I'm not going to, but that's how you do auto land. You have to have both autopilot one and two to have cat three dual. Alright, auto brake is brake low. Did that. And I'm going to arm these spoilers, which shows by that little triangle thing. Winds 060 at 8, so it's a slight crosswind. Not here, but at the airport. And 
activated the approach phase, so as soon as I hit managed on the speed, it will slow to the appropriate approach speed. Tell because it's uh, grayed out now. Approach winds are all accurate, I think. Yep. Mercury 2336. 35 left. One four thousand, the Phoenix altimeter two nine eight five. Jet three. We got tower. We got tower on the ready because we don't have our landing clearance yet. So. Legion twenty four Fresno ground runway two nine left taxi via Bravo three and Bravo. With Bravo, three Bravo for uh, Legion 24. All right, this uh, missed approach. Climb to 10,000, right turn direct to the GLL VOR. So that should already be, uh, yeah, it's already in the missed approach. So we'll just reset for 10,000 for missed. That's all we need. Except, uh, yeah, to the Gill VOR, straight out. And we'll enter a right pattern for missed approach. But I only perceive a missed approach if there's like a runway issue or if it was VATSIM, some people would join the server on the runway. So you do get um, missed procedures quite a lot on VATSIM because dummies will join the server on the runway and then the tower controller will see that they magically appear. <laughs> so they'll say, fly the mist, uh, you know, someone's on the runway. So I do a lot more mist approaches on VATSIM than I do on Pout Edge just for that reason alone. Very rare do I do a mist approach because of weather. Yeah, 1399, contact Denver Tower, 133.3. Denver Tower, 133.3, United 1399 Heavy. So we'll switch over to Tower. Denver Tower, United 1399 Heavy, stop some localizer, 35 left. Yeah, 1399 Heavy, Denver Tower, runway 35 left, clear to land. 35 left, clear to land, United 1399 Heavy. Alright, so we are, uh, Slow down here. Oh, managed, managed speed. Steering on this plane sucks till you get slow. So like 20 knots is when I'll try to turn off. Otherwise, it's like a snow plow. But the turn off that I want is the second turn off anyway, which would be mic seven. So we got flaps full. So looking at this turn off here. Get my track IR going. Reset that. All right, we got gear down. Flaps are set. Mist is set. Landing lights set. One pass. We're all set. Got plenty of runway here. Might do about 50% on the reversers. I don't think I'll need full reverse. And Rough Edge says, I think in two and a half years on Piled Edge, I have gone missed maybe four or five times. Yeah, yeah. It's just because there's not, like, you don't get the traffic here. And unless you seek out bad weather, it, like, there's way more bad weather in the Northeast. Um, or even the southeast than there is in the Pout Edge description area or subscription area just because it's like oh, sunny think. skies, you know, California sunny skies. If you want your best chance for a mist, do Seattle. <laughs> That's the uh, probably one oh. of the few places I do go mist for weather related stuff. All right, autopilot off. We're going to hand fly this baby in here. But yeah, I agree with you, man. I, I very rare do I go missed on Pottage. Legion 24, contact Fresno departure. Legion 24, 
200. Over to City Park, LHA 24. President of Parker, good day, LHA 24. One passing through uh, 2000 for 1075. 50. Is 24 30, present apart trader contact verify altitude? 10. 12, 12, 12, 2500 for 1000. Alright, we are down. Precursors are green at about 50% power and we'll coast down. Don't need a whole lot of reversers. We're slowing. Pain ground, turn to go, Bravo Mike. 80 knots. At the east ramp, information a hotel ready for taxi. Cursor's off. Keep this roll going. We're doing about 54. Keep your paying ground, runway 34 right. Taxi via box shop. That was Mike 6, so we're going to exit right up here at Mike 7. Turn, go, Bravo, Mike Oscar. Turn on the brake fans. Get the APU going here. Forgot the steering. I even Region said the steering sucks. Zero three zero vectors for Still Kabab. forgot. Zero three zero vectors for Kabab for at least twenty four. All right, you always stop after the stop bar, not before. Otherwise, you'll get a yelling at. All right, we are here. Denver Tower, United thirteen ninety nine heavy, south side of Bravo. 1399 heavy, you can taxi via mic and any of the ramp entries of your choice, monitor ground, we'll see ya. Parking via mic or monitor ground, you're not 1399 heavy, we'll see ya. Alright, so we can turn off, no, I need ground, which is uh, 121.85. So swap that over and get to turn that off. Use available, I guess. Let's see here. It's not quite, but. Alright, screw 24, contact off. Oakland Center, 125.75. 2575. Leaning lights off. Go, announcement. Left here. 24, Oakland Center, climb maintain level 230, could direct Kebab and join Q174. For your safety and comfort, we ask that you please remain seated with your seat belt fastened until the captain turns off the fastened seat belt sign. This will indicate that we have parked at the gate and that it is safe to move about. Please check around your seat. Turn for off the ILS signal. Um, cross to pawn event is going to be <laughs> yeah a show for sure too many kitties who don't know what they're doing yep but you know what that kind of makes it even more fun for me to fly the cross to pawn because listening to that craziness <laughs> it just makes me laugh although sometimes uh, like in the evenings like I said, the evenings is when I usually fly on VATSIM, but sometimes I'm just not in the mood for the childish stuff that, you know, those kitties do, like you say, on VATSIM. So a lot of times if you hear me on Pilot Edge in the evening, it's either A, I don't, there's no VATSIM controllers online, or there's no events happening, or even if there is, sometimes I just want the professionalism that Pilot Edge offers, and I just rather not deal with you know the the childish stuff that you have to deal with it's probably not the right gate for this airplane but uh <laughs> i'm gonna make it work b uh what is this 46 yeah i don't know what gate would handle a uh a heavy like this all right so we need generator in the bleed on
turn off our seatbelts. Turn off the taxi lights. I guess we could turn off our engines now. This APU is, just let me make sure that the APU has power, which it does. Engines coming offline. Do beacon light off, fuel pumps are off, oxygen, crew supply, turn off the nav data, and we'll leave all that on for now. APU bleed. Uh, all right, leave that on. Those inside jokes and memes and weird noises. Yeah, I get tired of the stupid cat calls that you hear on Batsim. It's like, what is the point? Like, I don't understand why they do the meow thing. It's annoying. But that's why I usually fly on Pilot Edge when I don't want to listen to that junk. I agree with you. All right, let's look at this. ILS again real quick before I go. So I'd have to look at the Pilot Edge instruction, but I believe if you're entering from anywhere in here, you have different elevations of these waypoints that are safe altitudes. So Sager is a safe altitude to get in line with the localizer. Sager's 3,500 one minute holding pattern at 17 DME from the localizer. So the John Wayne localizer is 17.3 DME. So distance away, <clears throat> miles away at 3,500 MSL or higher. And the reason it's 3,500 is because of these mountains here. Like this is 1781 mountain so you would enter you would follow the back course localizer outbound to sager so you would set your navigation radio your nav one for a course heading of 016 right so you would take that outbound until sager at which point you could do a teardrop entry so you would cross over sager come out to the left, teardrop in, and join the 196 uh, inbound. So you would change the course to 196. And then the reason you would stay in the holding pattern is if you're, if like, if you're super high for whatever reason, like if you're at 10,000 feet, you want to get lower, then you can stay in this pattern and descend as far as 3,500 feet and then when you're inbound sometimes they'll say report inbound so like say you enter and you're at like you know 10,000 11,000 feet you would just stay in the holding pattern until you're at 3,500 and then they might say report inbound so as soon as you leave this hold that's when you report inbound Legion 24 contact Oakland Center 127.45 so that's how I understand that at least Disconnect. Shut off the APU. Shut all that down. You can only enter at Sager. The others are thin lines, so not feeders. Um, right.
yeah, those thin lines are not feeders. But you can you can enter you can enter from like Seal Beach. You know. So if you enter, you need to come in from Seal Beach and you can use one of these radials from Seal Beach radials and then intercept the localizer to Sager. So you could do that, but I guess you'd have to ask for that or maybe they would tell you to, I don't know. I've never had that happen on this approach. They've always vectored me, but I'm not an expert. So they may just, I'm not sure. I don't know. Let me see what it says. Departing Seal Beach. We fly heading 049 as depicted on the chart. 049. All right, so you would fly this radi radial 049. We would fly heading 049 as depicted on a chart tracking towards Sager. Think ahead we see we'll need to join the John Wayne localizer outbound so on the other nav radio nav 2 we set the frequency for 11175 which is the ILS over Sager we make a left turn to heading in this case it'll be 016 and join the localizer outbound approaching Sager we need to fly to the HILPT, this will be a parallel hold entry. Um, so we continue outbound on the localizer for one minute past Sager, then initiate a left 225 degree turn. Then join the localizer inbound again. We can descend to 3,500 in the hold entry as depicted on the bottom of the chart. Where is this HIL? What is HILPT? We need to fly the HILPT. I don't know what that means. Anybody know what that means? If doing full approach, it's Sager. Well, it says you can, you know, intercept. It's flying the approach from Seal Beach. You want to cross Seal Beach at or above 4,000, cleared ILS, 2-0 right approach, report Sager inbound would be the instruction. So I would just come out above 4,000 from Seal Beach, go to Sager. You'd be already above the MEA, which is 35. You'd be at 4,000. So think of having to join the localizer outbound. So on the other nav, whatever, over Sager, we make a left turn to a heading of 016 to join the localizer outbound. So you would come out here, go out here, and then we need to fly the HILPT. I don't know what that is. I don't see HILPT. Oh, hold? Is, is that an acronym? Hold in lieu of procedure turn. Thank you. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, hold in lieu of procedure turn. So it's not a procedure turn because a procedure turn, I'm going to have to think of, I'm going to have to see where a procedure turn is. Let me see. Um, does Idaho Falls have a procedure? Yeah. Yeah, Idaho Falls has a procedure. So I can show you what a procedure turn would look like. Um, but thank you. That makes complete sense now. So this will be a parallel hold. So we continue outbound on the localizer for one minute past Sager. So it's a one minute hold, right? So you pass Sager for one minute. One minute. You, you go out for one minute. And then um, 
Then you initiate a left turn, 225 degree turn, although it might be more than that. It would be, uh, it looks like, I don't know. Um, initiate a left 225 degree, oh, I see. Okay, so it's 180 plus 45 to join the localizer inbound again so we can descend to 35 and the, in, and the hold entry is depicted on the bottom of the chart. So you would cross Sager at 4,000. You would fly out for one minute, come back out, do basically a teardrop entry, intercept the localizer inbound, to cross Sager at 3,500 feet, um, we can descend to 3,500 feet in the hold entry. So if you're not low enough or if you're not at 3,500 feet by Sager, then you can actually make the right turn hold pattern and stay in this one minute hold until you're inbound. So when you get to Snake, which is 3,400, then you can descend to 3,400, and then this one's 2,800. So when you're inbound, that's when you would report. So, like I said, the uh, the it says cross Steel Beach at or above 4,000, cleared ILS runway 20 right approach, report Sager inbound. That just means you fly on this radial, fly out for one minute, do a teardrop entry, come back in, hit the radial. Let the SoCal know you're inbound from Sager once you are ready to do so. That's all that that means. So the 049 is the only thick line, so only option doing full procedure. Um, y yes, like this is the one with the arrow. So when they tell you to fly it from Seal Beach, you follow the arrow. These are just, these are radials to show you where these waypoints are. So like Snake is based off of a uh, 060 radial from Seal Beach. So if you do a 060 radial, you'll inter inter intersect the localizer at Snake, which is 12.4 DME from the localizer. And the 068 radial, if you were to intercept that inbound, like if you had this on nav 2, by the time you would watch that needle cross over, you would be at Snake. And then Hookman is 076 at uh, 10 miles. Yeah, 10 DME. Hookman is 10 DME. So if, if you had nav 2, on a 076 radial, you would see that needle cross the center when you get here. So that way, if you're using two radials, you would know you're at the right distance. When you cross this radial at 076, it is exactly the same as being 10 miles from the radio signal of the localizer. That's, that's what these things are for. These radials are just pinpointing where these uh, waypoints are and those radials tell you at what altitude you can cross those radials and be safe of obstacles and mountains and stuff. Um, of course this has a glide slope so the glide slope will coincide with these radials coupled with these altitudes so the glide slope will bring you down exactly per these altitude restrictions. So, but yes, you're right. For a full approach, you follow, you would dial in 049 on, I would do it this way, 049 on nav 2, follow that in to Sager, switch to um, nav 1, and for 016 outbound for one minute, and then do a teardrop entry and spin your, uh, like when you're going out here, you could switch back to nav two or however you want to do it. But this procedure really requires two radios, two radios to do it, to do it really well.
Oh, okay, that's what I was missing. Oh, okay, cool. I'm glad I was able to help, or we, we were able to help answer this because I didn't have a clue what that one acronym meant. <laughs> Let um, I was seeing only right on the chart, but then left on entry per text was missing how it turns right. Yeah, so he was just saying when you come out, you do a left turn to come back in. And then you start the right hand pattern. So it's like this chart is, it's like you extend it out here, you come all the way up here, make a big left turn, not not real big, but left turn, come back in, reestablish inbound, and then keep in this hold until you're ready to go inbound. So report inbound from Sager just means when you're at 3,500 feet, you're established, you're inbound, that's when you would let NorCal know you're inbound on the uh, 20 right approach. This also now solves why the, my TBM was doing a left turn from Seal Beach when using the G1000. Yeah, yeah. You're better off just using the nav radios and using the radials. I thought it was wrong, so it was confused why it was getting me into a left turn on a right turn chart. Yeah, don't trust the G1000. It will it will have you turn all different ways. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Close that. And that flag. Let's see if I have enough for a... Let's see if I can... Let me make sure I'm offline. Yep, offline. Replay. I was here a while, apparently. Here we go. Four. Three hundred. Two hundred. Some wing bounce there. Seven Lima Yankee says uncertified pilot has a tutorial, good tutorial on hold entries. Yeah, he's done all the I ratings and he he's really good instructor too. I've watched a few of his videos. I agree, he's a good one to watch. He's not like a lot of streamers that are just about drinking beer and you know, talk and shop. He's similar to me to where I enjoy teaching what I've learned. You know, I'm not like a real world pilot, but I'm pretty versed on this, uh, at least online stuff. Are you clear to leave the hold before the calling? Yeah. Yeah. You can leave the hold whenever you are ready to. So if you're at, if you've descended and you're at 3,500 and you're inbound, then you just let them know you are inbound from Sager or whatever it was. So that's your call. I thought it was wrong. It didn't realize that there was a left turn. Oh, okay. If you meet the altitude restrictions and just leave the hold at your discretion. Yep, exactly. So long as you're clear of the approach. Yeah, they would have, they would have, on this instance, they would have cleared the approach at Seal Beach VOR. I'm assuming they wouldn't let you intercept if you weren't. Yeah, I've watched some of his stuff. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Got people inside Denver. the tower has uh, let me see I thought the tower had um, cameras I guess not
you can stay in hold if needed, but already in the altitude. Yeah, so you have to be at 3,500 feet at least. You don't want to be any lower. But you're just burning more fuel. Yeah, you don't have to stay in the hold. I would only stay in the hold until you're at 3,500 feet. But if you're clear of the approach um, at 4,000 from Seal Beach, you're only talking 500 feet. So really, by the time you do that, that traveling one minute past Sager and you make that uh, 220 degree turn or whatever it was by the time you get back to Sager you are allowed to descend to 3,500 and you can just go inbound and keep going at that point <laughs> four extra minutes can help especially to get your bearings or catch your breath yeah and if you're task saturated or if if that airport is really busy or if the controller is really busy and you're waiting for, you know, a good time to say you're inbound, that, that might be another reason to stay in that hole, too. So say they're, like, landing, like, ten planes all at once. You might want to stay in that hold for two revolutions. And then once the radio gets a little bit less crowded, then say you're inbound and you won't have... You know, to, you won't have that extra stress of will I be able to land or not? Because if you can't, if you don't get the landing clearance, then you're already set up for the missed approach. Whenever you are um, permitted to fly an approach, you are pre-authorized to fly the missed approach procedure. So that's why I, you always see me enter in the missed approach altitude, because if I don't get my landing clearance, I can't get a word in edgewise. You just automatically go toga or whatever airplane you're in and fly the missed approach procedure if you're on an instrument approach. And then as soon as you get a moment, you um, you would stay with uh, approach and just say, I'm flying the mist because I didn't get the, the swap over to tower. So that's another reason why you would fly the mist is if it's really crowded. Do you have to announce if you're going to stay in the hold? No. Nope. If you're authorized to fly the procedure, then you are pre-authorized to fly any part of that procedure. So you can stay in the hold for as long as you want. You can stay in there for 12 hours. Once you're approved to fly the procedure, you can fly the procedure as published. So, all right, guys. I need a break. I've been sitting here a while. I need to update this uh, other sim also. So this was a good test. It was a good stream. If anybody's interested, I'm going to be doing a, a fun stream tomorrow, like a world tour type thing. I'm going to visit the um, the Great Pyramids of Gaza in Egypt using the Aerosoft CRJ. I'll be flying the first part on that sim, just in case there's any ATC. Um, and then I'll be using the drone camera to check out the pyramids. And then I'll hop back in the jet and we'll land near Gaza International or whatever that, that place is. So tomorrow's just a fun stream. Nothing real realistic about tomorrow's stream. But I'll be back to my normal pilot stuff uh, for sure on Friday, if, if not before. So y'all take care and uh, thanks for the new follows. And I'll see you guys soon. Chase out. Twenty thirty five, lighting zero two zero, intercept only three five, left localizer. Twenty five. Fifty one sixty six, turn right, getting three two five, intercept only three five, right localizer. The airport one o'clock, and one tango. Heading three two five to the intercept, localizer, airport
Contact Denver Center 13.95. 